This podcast is brought to you by Infinite Resources, a local staffing agency connecting diverse job candidates and central Iowa companies. Welcome to Babylon Makes the Rules. This is Dr. Nagus M. Hotep. And one of my favorite songs was by Icky Mouse. He said, Rudy don't fear no boy. Rudy don't fear. Rougher than rough. Tougher than tough. Strong like a lion. We are iron. Rudy don't fear no boy. Welcome everybody into this media world. This is Dr. Nagusim Hotel. Want to give a shout out to Infinite Resources for sponsoring this event. For today, our topic will be make survival legal in America. I said, make survival legal in America. I remember when I was an undergrad at Texas Southern University, I remember that uh, I was taking a political science class from a Dr. Franklin Jones. And he told us as pupils in his classroom to always watch what is going on in the media and what's going on in the movies because if it hasn't happened to you yet it will occur soon make survival legal in America is the topic why did I bring up this topic my wife tricked me the other night and had me to sit up and watch the Humber- Hunger Games with her. And I ended up watching two episodes, two different groups, you know. I said, my goodness. I looked at this movie and then I had to have a historical flashback. I remember as a kid back in 1960, there was a telecast called Hunger in America. It was on CBS. Hunger in America brought the many faces of hunger into the living rooms across this country and made the problem all too human. The moving and horrible scenes of small children suffering hunger, malnutrition, and related diseases that this country assumed had long been eradicated. I saw black families. I saw Hispanic families. I saw white families who were migrant workers working in different sections of this nation. I remember I went back and looked at some of the things that was going on and saw where the filming took place. And it took place in the Black Belt of Virginia in the horse country. It also was in Alabama. This documentary took filmings of people in the barrios in San Antonio. It showed individuals on Indian reservations in Arizona. It's something right now in this society where inflation is so high The cost of living is continuing to go up. And it's hard 
for those on the lower end to find means to survive. Just earlier this spring, a lot of construction was going on here in Des Moines and right on Martin Luther King Boulevard. Just south, no, just north of where I'm, I'm located right at this time. I remember going down MLK and right south of downtown, you saw tenant communities where people were living in tents because they had nowhere to lay their head other than in their tents. Then city leaders come through and they uh, send law enforcement in to move people and take their things up and throw stuff away. But this was what people had to survive on. Why is it this way? It's this way because the United States has a problem with the wealth gap and wealth inequality. I pulled up an article that was written by Ann Hernandez Kintz and Lowell R. Rickett. They wrote this paper on July 31st, 2023. It's a little short article. And I'm going to read it for you today. The state of the U.S. wealth inequality presents a timely look at average inflation adjustments, wealth for various demographic groups. The Institute for Economic Equity provides quarterly data on racial, generational, educational, wealth inequality based on average U.S. household wealth. Knowing the current state of wealth inequality sheds light on opportunities to foster a more equitable economy where everyone can thrive. These estimates reveal that the size of the wealth gap between different demographic groups and identify which groups have the fewest resources. Knowing the magnitude of these gaps over time is an important step towards understanding why these differences persist and what actions might close them. Expanding the opportunity to build wealth for all families creates a potential for greater economic equity. Here in the city of Des Moines, they're dealing with an issue just like most major cities around the country are dealing with issues of finding affordable housing for people. And the late great Malcolm X, El Haj Malik El Shabazz, made a statement back in the 1960s. He said, Land is the basis of independence. And if you don't own land, you're a slave. Look at some of these key takeaways from this particular article that was written from the first quarter of this year. How much wealth inequality is there in the United States? Here's some data that you might surprise you. Then it might not. The top 10% of households by wealth have $6.8 million on average. Just as a group, 69% of the total household wealth. The bottom 50% of households by wealth have 48,000 on average as a group. They hold only 2.4% of the total household wealth. 
major issue. The top 10% as a group, I'm going to say it again, the top 10% as a group, they hold 69% of the total household wealth. Where the bottom 50%, this group only holds 2.4% of their total wealth. When we look at the current generational wealth gap, younger Americans, millennials and Gen Xers, own 69 cents for every $1 wealth owned by a Gen Xer at the same age. Younger Americans and millennials and Gen Xers own 72 cents for every $1 wealth owned by baby boomers at the same age. Mm. Young folks don't have the money old folks have. Mm. But there's some coming up. What is the current racial wealth gap? Black families owned about 24 cents for every dollar of white family wealth on average. Hispanics families own about 23 cents for every one dollar of a white family wealth on average. Hmm. I remember doing some research and uh, Dr. Robin D.G. Kelly, PhD from UCLA, uh, did uh, many lectures on racial capitalism. And in conclusion, he stated that whiteness equals property. So black equals criminal or poor to this society, the mindset. So what is the current wealth gap in household education? Families headed by someone with some college education, but no four-year degree, had 30 cents for every dollar of wealth held by families headed by a four-year college graduate. Families headed by someone with a high school diploma had 23 cents for every dollar of wealth held by families headed by a four-year college graduate. Families headed by someone with less than a high school diploma had 10 cents for every dollar wealth held by a family headed by a four-year college graduate. Overall, the average wealth grew for many groups during most of 2020 and 2021, even after controlling historical inflation. However, some of those gains were erased in 2022 and early 2023 with loss in financial markets and weakening housing markets. There's a need to address the gap. I know in the past presidential election, it was a, a candidate named Andrew Yang. He was trying to do an experiment while he was running for office at the same time. He selected some families to just give an extra $1,000 a month into people's income and saw what it did and saw how it helped. Why is the economy the way it is? We have a Federal Reserve Bank where I don't think God can get into that bank. They don't, they, 
it's only certain officials or certain groups of people that can even address looking into the Federal Reserve's. And then most of these good old Christian folks tell you that the love of money is the root of all evil. But it's hard as hell to live if you don't have none. Wow. Over this Labor Day weekend, I had the privilege of going to Santa Fe, New Mexico. Beautiful mountain region. Mexican culture, good food, good music. Everything was nice. Up in the hills where all the rich folks are. I sat there with my scientific eye just to watch. And I saw how the people from the valley would come up to the mountains to work for the rich people. They couldn't, they could work there. They could play there just for a short time if they wanted to, but they couldn't afford to live there up in the mountains. I remember in my past where I lived in Albuquerque New Mexico, it was the same way. Up in the mountains, up in the hills, the wealthy people lived up in the hills, and the poor people lived in the valleys. The crime and the vice was in the valleys. Up in the mountains, it didn't have no issues like that, that what you would see down in the valleys. And I see the same everywhere I travel around this country. If it's up in the hills or if it's a flat land, there are certain areas that are still redlined and segregated today in the United States because that's the way this system was created. Rich folks don't want you around unless you're around there cleaning up something or serving them some food. Other than that, uh, go back to your place. This type of inequity must be addressed because there's going to be a day and a time where we see things are not the way they used to be. Bob Marley said in his song, my belly full but me hungry. A hungry man is an angry man. You better feed these people. America, we got to address this problem for the sake of our children, for the sake of this nation, for the sake of humanity. You good Christian loving people, you say in in your Bible, Jesus said, I wish that you would prosper Prosper and be in good health even as your souls prosper. If you're a believer and say that's what you believe, stand by the word. Government officials from county, city, state, and federal, you have to address this problem. And it needs to be fixed. The wealth gap in the United States maintains separation in this society. That's what was rooted down in my heart after what I'd seen. I brought up some information about a documentary back in CBS did back in 1968. And I can rem- I remember seeing 
women with children who were out in the field working, picking peas, picking cotton, picking whatever product that these landowners had while their children was at home in a little shanty trying to find something to eat. When America is labeled as one of the wealthiest nations on this planet, it shouldn't be so divided. That's just a utopian thought of mine. I came just to ruffle a little feathers and talk to people today about the need to addressing the wealth gap in the United States. If this nation is to prosper like it claims that it is, if it really wants to prosper, it would open up opportunities and make ways for those who have not. From my Judeo-Christian background, the words of the one they call Jesus. He said, when you did it to the least of these, you've done it unto me. So watch how you treat the least. It'll come back on you. And that's all I got to say for today. On a Friday, September the 8th, 2023, a blessed day. My oldest son's birthday. Happy birthday, Devin. Dad loves you. And all of you out there in the social media world, love, peace, and chicken grease. This is Dr. Nagus in Hotep signing off. Have a good one. This podcast is brought to you by Infinite Resources, a local staffing agency connecting diverse job candidates and central Iowa companies.